laying back, deep full breath, setting the flow already. And are you happy with the temperature really quick? Yes. Okay, sounds good. Like I can get the air going if you want, but it seems like we're getting almost to autumn, so. Okay, good. <laughs> Some mornings I wake up and it's been a little chill in the air, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> As we're breathing here, relaxing. The idea that I was thinking of for today comes from the inspiration of our fascia. The fascia is the little tiny sheath that surrounds each of the muscles. And I was learning recently that every couple of months, all the cells of the fascia are replaced. So if you think about it, if you hold your body in different positions for more and more of the time, your fascia will start to respond to that. So if all of a sudden, maybe somebody's going through grief and they're in a super hunched, closed off position for more of the time, in just a matter of months, the fascia should learn that that's the shape that the body is to be in. So the fascia is built around that shape. And it's kind of funny because then by that point, you know, standing upright and stretching starts to become more of a task because even that sheep is resisting other shapes so that's kind of our inspiration today is just being more aware of what position we're bringing our body into and what that will do long term so you know if you if you're in a fetal position for instance just for a short time it's not a big deal but if that's the position you're holding yourself in constantly it makes changes in your body and so we're helping today to stretch out even just long held stretches to get deep into that fascia area, but also just awareness of how we hold ourselves, how our posture is, how the, the, the different stretches start to feel on the body. And so with that awareness, maybe we lead the rest of our lives just a little bit more consciously of how we're holding ourselves. So the that I get to help you this up, let's take our initial stretches. So arms to the back wall, inhale. So we'll be into one side. Inhale along. So lean. So these stretches that we're feeling already, do it a couple of times. Part of the stretch that we're feeling is definitely the muscle layer. But also joined right there in there is the, the fascia. Because we don't usually lean. To the side like this. That's definitely not the posture we hold ourselves in. So that's why we pull the stretch. Because all the surrounding tissues suddenly brought into length. So let's go back through the center, right knee into chest, pull it into tight, ankle rolls, direction. Start to extend leg up to sky, grab on. Heel continues to push up. The breath flowing as you're doing this. <laughs> Hold it there for just a moment longer. out this leg and release it down and left knee into press. Get lower. We'll give it a go. Okay. I can change it if you want. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no planks today. <laughs> Oh, 
left leg up to the sky, hamstring stretch. You just do hamstring or the hip stretch, one on each side. Left. So that puts it up. Okay. Breath slow. And last side, hook the left toe back right for that hip stretch. Take a couple of breaths. This leg. We'll start off today with a vampire pose that flips into the splits. So already start to scoot the fabric down. More fabric is at the feet. Do that perfect one thin layer for the shoulders for the vampire. Let's have right foot covered, left foot free. When you're there, grab onto each side, upside down. The foot that's covered down to the face in front of chest first. Right foot in front of chest. And left foot to the floor. Thinking back, we can fill the fascia layer, stretching alongside the hamstrings. So that nice massage into the fascia of the neck. So if you're touching the back wall, scoot forward a little bit and then relax back into the stretch. If not, no worries. Just keep on relaxing with gravity as much as possible. Good deep breaths flow, teaching the fascia around the ribs that they can accept deeper breaths more of the time. More breaths for this half. Great. We'll transition to the other side. You can either go through the plank where you step both feet in for a moment, another foot out, or if you'd like to transition a different way, that's fine, such as rolling all the way in. In quality, where we just start to work on release with gravity. Minimal effort necessary. That's when you can start to tell you're getting, you've attended lots of classes, and you can get yourself back in on that one. <laughs> Relax their hamstrings, and I try to relax even deeper.
more breaths as slow as you can make it. Then from here, if you want more vampire time, start to rise upside down. There's other things like the plow pose that you want to play with or anything like that that's also perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Too rolled on the shoulder, so I was like, I'm not gonna flip back up from there. That's no fair. Good. <laughs> good to know that. So from laying back down, let's take a couple of stretches for the neck. Let the head be off the back end for a moment, and let the chin just drop up. The head drops back. Now the hands scoop the weight of the head up, passing hands behind the back of the head. And bring your chin into the chest now. Take a stretch through the back of the neck. So readjust if you're not quite there yet. Sometimes I just need to push my shoulders down further away from the ears to get into that stretch for the neck. From the orientation of the hammock, push your left elbow further in to the hammock. So this pulls the right elbow back and it turns your chin just a little bit to the right. And then switch sides. The head turns just a little bit to the left because the right elbow is pushing into the hammock. Beautiful. Head back through the middle. Chin back equal to the chest, the center of it. Gently release the head. The fingertips stretch to the back wall for a moment. Take a huge inhale. Exhale, rise up to stretch over the two long legs. Notice where your stretch is. Is it through the shoulder area as the fingers reach forward? Low back, through the hamstrings. Areas where you can look the most, try to relax into those spots. Giving permission for the fascia to receive the extra stretch, the new 
lengthening that the possibility for that area, like a suggesting something new to the cells of our body. Spine rises up, feet come out the front end, grabbing onto each side, we'll exit up the front. And have our head in front of us. Chance just to lean forward. Bullet is more of a melting quality rather than reaching a destination. Melting means it's continuous, it's not an end spot to the stretch. Imagine the hands could just keep on going forward, the heart could keep on drooping down. Take the left elbow, the right arm sways up, your head left. Straighten the left arm forward, right elbow bend, sway over to the right. back forward. Feel your body have a chance to settle back into the shape, relax even deeper. Soft bend in the knees, roll the spine up. Right foot steps into the middle of the fabric. Grabbing up nice and high, let the front leg extend forward straight. And then start to sink your weight forward. I can still change the height of these. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I got this. <laughs> my ankle pretty patently oh, last weekend, so got it's... Got it. Well, make sure you watch out for that, for sure. The muscles feel like they're punching against it. Try to give them space to lay. Weight comes back over the center. Just turn your standing toes to the left. And we're open, spreading the arms up on this left side. So left arm up, right arm sits down. Chest is opening laterally. Maybe some way to sink into the mirror.
weight is up. Grab on with ready hand for safety. One more 90 degree turn to the back wall. Bend the knee for taking a quad stretch. So maybe the hop back just a little bit to feel like your better balance great. And just rest the fabric on the back side of each shoulder blade. And just lean back. We don't fill it enough. Let the knee point even further back. Just standing on your left foot. Either take dancer's pose, so that would be the back bend version. You're gripping over each shoulder, leaning forward, kicking the foot up, or take the backward splits. That'd be hand slide up high, and then you're trying to lengthen the leg back and sink back legs. So either version, whatever feels best right now. Give it two or three breaths. And we can take our weight back up over the center. Bring the foot out by pointing the toes and just slipping the foot. And facing forward, left foot into the center. Let's see there. The leg lengthens forward. Hands are up high. And start to slowly sink the weight forward. Try to think of the shape the body is in. So, for instance, if I notice this front knee is wanting to just stay bent, the first thing I focus on is the shape. So the leg lengthens forward. Only if I can keep that shape do I start to sink for, forward even more. So awareness of the shapes helps to give us awareness of how the fascia is going to be building around our body as it rejuvenates over the next couple of months the shapes of our body, for instance, the spine to be more elongated rather than rounded. Weight starts to come back over the center. Right toes turn to the right. On the right strand, right hand slides up, left down. The chest is opening, maybe weight continues to sink forward. So up, weight over the standing legs. Start to turn one more 90 degree turn to face the back wall. Pop back if you need to. A light grip over each shoulder and the quad stretch, just leaning back with the knee pull back. Standing back up, dancer's pose or the backward splits. 
the breath flowing deep and full, whichever you choose. breath in, out, beautiful, releasing the quilt, okay, so here we're going to head to the advanced challenge pose, this one is the, the neck hang, you can't get into it today, no worries, once we're done, either if you can't get into it or if you just don't want to do it today, we'll, we'll head into the hip hang afterward. So put this one, grab the center of the fabric, place it behind the back of neck. The arms dive through these little loops that are off to each side. Bowing forward, the hands need to reach up and grab each side. And then a couple of steps backwards brings our neck under plumb line. So from here, we bend the knees and we bounce up, trying to get the hips right above the shoulders. Good. If you want me to spot you too, I can spot you to try to help you get up if you want to, but you don't have to. Oh, I don't think that's, that's what I need today. To no worries. So play with it as much as you want and then hit hang afterward. It does make it look fun though. It feels <laughs> so beautiful on the neck. <laughs> it's it's kind of like the let's say the Intruvian man, where it's just so intense on your legs. It's like that, but for your neck, which while you're in it feels intense, but as soon as you get out, it's like, oh <laughs> so delicious. <laughs> yeah. Take a break, go for it, and then we'll head to the hip hang. Getting the fascia release on the, the psoas. Any variations you want to play with are fine. Such as splits, twisting, just hanging, anything that feels good, go for it. One of the beautiful things of hanging is it's such a good reset for the muscles, the disc, and even the fascia of the spine, where the spine usually tells one story being upside down, suddenly it's able to kind of use an eraser and erase some of the stuff that we've been, you know, some of the shapes we've been putting our body into. So we get to reset, and when we come back up, we can choose. The story we continue to write on our spine. But how we hold ourselves.
Give a few more breaths here. Even if it's, you've been up for a while, it's just a meditative stand, a chance for your feet to make contact with the earth. Let's breathe. Eventually, we'll stand up on our own when you feel ready. Take a moment to focus on the neck. We'll get our fingers off to each side. First and foremost, feel the spines about tight. The core is a little bit engaged so that you're not splaying open or collapsed. You're just elongated. Fingers floating off to each side. The right finger, the right ear drops to the right shoulder. Option for the right hand to rest the weight on the top ear, but you don't have to do that. Sometimes that's too much weight on the head. As you release the hand from the head, if it's there, turn the nose down to the armpit. So the left finger is pulling backwards, the space behind you just a little bit. Continue to roll chin all the way down to the chest. The head rolls up. Switch sides, so left ear to left shoulder. Option for left hand to rest on the top ear. The hand is there, release, turn the nose down to armpit. And pulls the space behind you a little bit further. The chin continues to roll to chest. Step the right foot directly into the fabric. Hands grip up high. Up to stand. We take our tree pose. The left leg wrap winds around that left pole. The left arm has to go forward. Option for hands at the heart or left hand grabbing the left foot are welcome to extend that left leg out. <laughs> you can't yawn if you're not relaxed, so I'll take it as a compliment. I'm not stressing you out right now. <laughs> Beautiful. Start to head out. So left hand grabs for safety and then right as soon as you can. Back down. Lengthen into just a brief split. And then swinging so that you can feel comfortable. Whenever you're on the second side, come up to stand. Tree pose. So right leg wraps and right shoulder comes forward. And it hard is fine. Or extension of the right leg. For the left fascia of the foot, relax.
Left hand grabs on for safety, right grabs as soon as it can. Up to standing. This left leg extends forward, brief split. Optional swinging switch, getting right leg back in. And then freeing up the fabric, cover up the leg. Make sure you're under plumb line. Stay there, dive the elbows inside, elbows push out. That lifts up the legs, lean forward, or so close to the thigh. Rising the spine upright, we'll take a spinal twist. So left hand stays on the inside. The right arm circles up to reach to the back wall. As the right arm returns, we grab onto the left side. Going to standing toes to the left. We'll start to slide the hands down the long edge of the fabric. You're welcome to keep the grip of the fabric if you want to stay at the halfway point. Otherwise, you can drop left hand to floor or even right hand also. Basically going as deep into it as you like. It feels like the leg Sinking to mirror isn't going to the right angle, just readjust where you're standing for this. over the standing leg. One hand grabs the fabric and then the other. Bend at the knee, spring pop up. The fabric slips back down closer to the ankle so that you can turn to the face the back wall and then the fabric's caught around the foot. Good. <laughs> Facing the back wall, we're taking another quad stretch. Just swing back into the fabric. See if you can relax even deeper into that area. Standing, we'll drop the hands to the floor, getting toward a hip post. Down, over the elbows. The legs in the fabric can be bent or straightened, and I'll we'll tell how it shifts exactly where the stretch is based on which option you choose. Bring up to hands, free out the legs in the fabric. 
She has a little recovery shape, so maybe child pillows, maybe hip wax, downward facing dog, whatever feels helpful to loosen up what's tight. You feel ready sooner or later, make your way up to standing however you do that. Maybe a down dog, then a forward fold to rise, or any other way you want to get up. Whenever you're up, the left leg is in, we extend the fabric along the leg. There, sooner or later, dive inside and then elbows push to each side, lifting up the leg a little bit, moving forward, the torso closer to the thigh. Spine rises up, leave the right arm inside, left arm circles up to sky to reach to the back wall. As the arm returns, both hands grab on the left, or the right, sorry, standing toes turn to the right. You're welcome to just pause, leaning halfway forward. Right hand drops to floor, maybe left also. Any amount of stretch where you feel even very cautious stretching with you. More breath. Weight over the standing leg. One hand grabs first and then the other. The knee bends to bring us up. The fabric goes down toward ankle so we can turn to face the back wall. Quad stretch. Leaning backward into the fabric when we get there. up. We drop our hands to the floor, preparing for pigeon pillows. So right knee settles down and lower to elbows.
Drop the hands, drop the knee out. Good, take a moment for recovery, whatever your hips need. Eventually rising up right, but not a rush. We'll start from travel back and I'll offer a couple of variations. Standing in front of the fabric, and back into it, and toe under plumb line before you rise. And so the first variation here is a Ventruvian mat. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can play with just hanging upside down or other things that might feel good, like the shoulder clasping. If you're doing a Ventruvian mat, both feet are still in front of fabric. Do a crunch. So reach up, grabbing above where the feet are. Leave the knees through the center. And then raise all the way up. We're in that deep fascia massage for the inner thighs. You'll stay here as long as you feel comfortable. Eventually, when you're ready to drop back upside down, you can either go backwards or switch the grip forwards and then squeezing the knees together, walk the foot forward. Beautiful, and we'll take a chandelier from here. So right ankle stays, left leg comes behind the back. One or both hands grabs onto that. Pushing the foot into the hands, creates a shoulder stretch and a back arch, or pulling the foot in close to the glute, which is more of a quad stretch. So you're ready. Be here for a little while. Okay, leaving the legs as they are, we'll come up. So hands grab onto each side of the fabric. Walk the hands up above where the foot is and just pause for a moment through the head. When you feel like you would be safe to be standing upright, you'll tilt forward and squeeze the knee into the middle. That squeeze is what helps get it to the point where you can stand. Good. <laughs> awesome, you made it. <laughs> like the fabric might be just a little high for this one, but that's okay. So if there's more slack you can take out, you'll scoop the knee higher as you take the slack out by straightening the left arm. If you're about where you're at, great. <laughs> if you would like to extend the right leg straight and try to grab the right hand on the calf or the ankle or the foot, that's fine. If you're in a great stretch already, awesome. Yep, that's where we're headed next, so no worries. So unwind. Three, four, you're one. Let the hips sink forward. Grab up high. Good. The weight comes back. One last splits for this side. So fabric to the ankle, grip high, and release forward. And free up the foot as your weight comes back. Got one more side. And back to straddle back. If you're doing Ventruvian, give it one more go. Walking hands up, squeeze the knees through the center. So you walk up until you're there. 
possible variation to extend the leg straight if you wish. Now left ankle stays, right leg comes behind your back, chandelier. Two more breaths. Release, go onto the fabric, onto that half seat. Feel like your head's okay, tilt forward and squeeze the knee into the middle. Good. If there's more slack that needs to be taken out, the right arm extends out to push it out. Option to stay or extend the left leg. Release the fabric unwinds out in front of you. Three, four, your one. And weight comes back. One last split for the side. She hands up high, the leg is extending straight and sink forward. Last breath in, out, and then taking one foot out. From here, if there's any last stretches your body needs, you're welcome to go to it, or at any point, head to Shavasana, whether that's on the ground or in the fabric. Do you want the air on for Shavasana or do you want to? I'm warm, but I don't know if it's just me. Okay. Okay. The one that's closer to it. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll go ahead and bump it up.
we'll start the process of returning. Maybe that means some stretches or just some deep breaths. Maybe it means a fetal position off to each side, coming in and arching the spine back. A good minute or two, stretching the body mentally returning back to this time and this space. Eventually rising up to a comfortable seated space when you're ready. Hands join together in front of our heart. We thank our body, our breath, our muscles, and especially our fascia, a fascia that holds the muscles in its shape, in its place. We recognize by choosing consciously the shapes we put our body into that will shape how our fascia forms as it rejuvenates over the next couple of months. So choosing more optimal positions more of the time helps the body feel more healthy, more aligned. So with all this to help lead us on, let's wrap up the time we got to share together today with the sound of oh, so you can come out. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste.